Welcome to the video guide for Kai Yan's Wrath, Legend, a new Agato Uprising boss fight difficulty released as part of patch 2.4 of Dragalia Lost. The second of the Legend difficulty Agato fights to be released, Legend difficulty fights are proving to be a challenge. Even with the best weapons and facilities, you should expect this to be punishing and unforgiving. My name is Xenozillus, and let's get straight to it. Much like Legend Volk, Legend Kayan follows the structure of the expert fight more closely than Master, but as always we'll go over the changes that make this fight deserving of the Legend title. Kayan still retains his Battleground and Adamantine Shield abilities, and gains the Berserk mechanic we saw in Legend Volk. As with all Agato fights, certain mechanics and attacks will be skipped or repeated based on phase progression and remaining hit points. The fight starts with Kayan granting himself a shield as well as a defense buff. Be sure to dispel twice before handling the rest of the phase as you normally would, with a small exception. Kayan gains a new mechanic, Circular Dualism, which introduces new markers and telegraphs. At certain points in the fight, the team will be marked with Sun and Moon markers, with Light and Shadow satellites appearing in the arena. Sun matches with Light, and Moon matches with Shadow. Touching the satellite zones of the other colour will cause you to take moderate amounts of damage. Nothing a Grey Shield can't handle, but don't make a habit of standing in the wrong zone. The Sun and Moon markers also block Dragon Form and Dragon Drive, and will strip them away if you're currently transformed. This means Bellina gets a chance to use her S2, but also means that you can't Dragon Tank your way through a few mechanics. These mechanics are a bit simpler in solo mode, as the team is only marked with Suns and the zones don't hurt as much, but it's something to keep in mind. Circular Dualism will overlap with other mechanics to introduce some obstacles to handling the movement required, but it's fairly simple once you get the hang of identifying a marker as soon as they appear. Once you clear the first form, we enter Phase 2. Phase 2 has you entering directly into a loop. You'll have the typical opening blast accompanying Kayan's phase change, followed by an adamantine shield and the familiar ring and donut markers that inflict strength debuffs or skill suppression. Following a few swipes and a circular dualism, you'll come across the first bit of randomness in the fight. Kayan can use either Roomwide Purple or stack variations of Universal Annihilation. If he leads with the Roomwide, he'll immediately follow up with a Crushing Cataclysm, targeting the furthest player. If he leads with a stack variation, he immediately follows up with the smaller Purple AoE. After a charge, swipe and a throw, Kayan ends the loop with a new mechanic, Light or Shadow's Dogma. Light's Dogma will select a Moon-marked player, spawning a cage of Light Zones around them. A stack marker appears, and the marked player is trapped while it resolves. If the other Moon-marked player attempts to pass the Ring of Light Zones, they'll take almost lethal amounts of damage, only sometimes survivable with a Grey Shield. The stack marker resolves, and the fight continues on. Shadow's Dogma is functionally equivalent, except a Sun-marked player is selected, and the Ring will be made of Shadow Zones. At any point following the first Universal Annihilation mechanics in this loop, you'll enter the next loop once Kayan's hit points drop below 85% hit points. Most rooms following a good fight pace will skip to the next phase before he even reaches the Dogma mechanics. The second loop starts with Linear Dualism. Much like Circular Dualism, this marks players with Sun and Moon markers, as well as spawning a line of Light and Shadow zones. Linear Dualism is paired up with Light or Shadow's Axiom. This spawns a large light or shadow zone in the top right or bottom left. Players with sun markers should follow the large light zone and avoid the shadow zones, and vice versa. Players with moon markers should avoid the light zones and follow the large shadow zone. Being in the wrong zone, or not being in the right one, will cause you to take chunky damage ticks of about 1.5 to 2,000 damage. This deals negligible damage in solo mode and can almost be ignored if you have full grey shields. In general, you'll end up having to run about a lap and a half around Kayan to follow or avoid the zone, making sure to pass through the correct mini-markers to avoid taking extra damage. Once the Axiom zone resolves, it's followed with a Dogma of the other colour. Following some satellite chases, a charge, and a couple of swipes, you'll see Circular Dualism again. This time, it'll rotate. That's about it. This will be coupled with a bit more randomness. Kayan will use either a stack followed by a room-wide universal annihilation, or the other way around. Following a charge, a swipe, and a throw, the loop repeats until Kayan reaches 70% hit points, but most lobbies skip this phase soon after the satellite chases. Kayan's throw in Legend has a fan of purple line telegraphs, but it's fairly simple to avoid by getting behind him or just standing between the lines. 
Once you push past 17% hit points, Kaiyan spawns Supreme Spears. These are now removed by hitting them multiple times rather than depleting a health bar. In co-op, each orb will require 20 hits to remove. Kayan will follow this with more satellite chases before charging 6 times. As always, bait these charges away from the spears as now Kayan gains 3 buffs from each spear. If he happens to hit a white spear and his regen buffs aren't dispelled within a few seconds, you may have to restart the fight as he'll quickly gain enough health to force you to time out. After a universal annihilation of either the stack or room-wide variety and a dogma, we enter the next loop, starting with a circular dualism followed by two possible sequences. A purple annihilation, followed by a stack annihilation, followed by a mini purple AoE, or a stack, followed by a room wide purple, followed by a crushing cataclysm. This basically simplifies to going out, in, out, or in, out, and then to in, unless you're a support or a healer, in which case you'll want to be targeted by the crushing cataclysm. After this is a repeat of mechanics you've seen before charges, throws, swipes, shields, axioms, and dogmas until you hit 30% hit points. This is roughly when his hit points reaches the end of the overdrive bar. Unlike Volk, Kayan is able to skip to Berserk incredibly quickly, so Berserk is practically impossible to skip like he can in Volk. Once Kayan reaches 30% hit points, we reach the hallmark of the legend difficulty, Berserk Mode. Much like Volk, Kayan gains 5x strength, 4x defense, remains in permanent overdrive, and gains 4 resists to all afflictions. However, his overdrive bar also takes 5 times more damage from 4 strikes. Once broken, his defense returns to 1.25 times the base level. Telegraphs for the charges and swipes disappear, but targets of charge are marked by a crosshair. Once Kayan hits Berserk mode, another set of spears are spawned, followed by 5 charges. After this, Kayan enters his final loop of the fight. There's nothing too complex here, as most mechanics here have been seen, minus the missing telegraphs. Kayan starts the loop with either a room-wide annihilation followed by a crushing cataclysm, or a stack annihilation followed by a mini purple AoE. These move very quickly, so be sure not to be caught in animation lock or you'll end up getting one shot. This can be followed either by a new variation of linear dualism or a dogma. The new variation of linear dualism will rotate, and you'll have to avoid swipes and throws while these are moving, as well as trying your best to maintain your DPS. With a few more reactable mechanics following an adamantine shield, be wary of a surprise crushing cataclysm. Healers and support should maintain distance to ensure DPS are free to break the weak point. After that is a circular dualism with a universal annihilation of either variety before we restart the loop. The berserk phase boils down to force striking Kayan's overdrive bar to oblivion while keeping an eye on his untelegraphed attacks, before unloading damage on him during breaks. Repeat this a few times and you should have your clear. One particular thing to keep in mind is that he can sometimes surprise you with a mechanic just as he exits break, as his wind-up times are incredibly short. Otherwise, the rest of the fight comes down to practice. When it comes to team compositions, we don't see as many cheese compositions as we did in Volk, due to Kayan's Berserk phase being much harder to skip. Most teams field a Grace and a Patia, with a dispelling DPS such as Joker or Bellina. The final slots can be taken by a DPS of your choice, though popular choices I've seen include Gala Shell and occasionally Veronica. Team compositions are always changing however, so take my recommendations with a grain of salt. As always, there's a wealth of clear videos on YouTube for you to gain team composition inspiration from, so make sure to not rely on me as your only source of information. If you have further questions, feel free to leave a comment or pop by my Twitch streams. I stream Wednesdays and Saturdays at 9.30pm GMT. As always, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.